Start your day with a positive thought. Eat breakfast. Eat a healthy breakfast. What is a healthy breakfast? Eggs? No, no, too much cholesterol. Uh, milk, antibiotics and hormones. Uh, fruit, OJ? Uh-uh, too much sugar. Okay. Uh, how about quinoa? Yogurt? Correction, Greek yogurt. Personally, I prefer French toast with whipped cream and strawberries. <laughs> then there's exercise, yoga, pilates, uh, running, walking. How about just getting off the couch? Uh, does driving count? Meditation, prayer, sleep. Eat a superfood. No, no, not that one. The new one. This is only the health part of the puzzle. And it seems to change every day. But according to all the blogs, advertisements, and social media, these are just the tip of what it takes to make us better. Better in some way that will help us get ahead. There is a question, then there is the question of privilege. Can I, by a show of hands, can I see how many of you have seen the video, uh, The Hundred Dollar Race? Has anyone heard of that? Okay. Well, I'd like you to watch it all now. Before I say go, I'm going to make a couple statements. If those statements apply to you, I want you to take two steps forward. If those statements don't apply to you, I want you to stay right where you're at. Up on stage. 
Can I have you guys with me? Just five of you. That'd be great. We're going to do a privileged walk of our own based on the longest running body of research done at Harvard University. If I can have you all stand in a line right here in the center of stage. Turn, face me. Great. Now, we're going to assume that you all have the same privilege. Every step backwards represents privilege that undermines your ability to get ahead in life. Yeah? And every step forward represents a life skill that will help you acclimate to life as an adult. I'll ask the questions and then ask you to step forward or back depending on the situation. For every maid or housekeeper you have at home, take one step back. If you have a part-time, once a week, or no maid, take one step forward. If you know what a dust bunny looks like, and a personally removed one from under your bed, take one step forward. If you come home to a clean room, take one step back. If someone other than yourself cleans your bathroom, take one step back. If your dirty clothes go from the floor and into the closet clean without any effort on your part, take one step back. If you can give directions using street names and major landmarks from your home to school, take one step forward. If you earn a wage or are given a budget for all your entertainment, take one step forward. If you have never turned on the oven or stove in your house, take one step back. If you knew you were getting the latest iPhone or Samsung without it being a special occasion, Take one step back. If you have a job at home that benefits someone besides yourself, doing the dishes, laundry, taking out the trash, take a step forward for every job you do. Now look around you. How many of you thought you would be where you are? Thank you, guys. Well, it turns out well, it turns out that although privilege may give you opportunity, at a certain point, privilege no longer becomes something else. It becomes spoiling. And it undermines all the privilege that parents give to their kids. So what about grit and perseverance, the idea of good work ethic? Based on this longest-running Harvard grant study that started in 1938, and has gone till present, so about 75 years plus, and a 20-year data analysis from the University of Minnesota. It is chores that give us the grit, the perseverance, and the work that we need to succeed as adults. They also define two things, that to succeed and to be happy, we need love to be happy, and we need that work ethic to succeed. It's that simple. To be successful, let your kid clean, cook, pick up after themselves and their siblings. Give them a job now. And by the way, making their own bed doesn't really count. Allow them to cook a meal, wash the dishes, share in the work that is done that takes care of the family. Put a schedule on the fridge. It's easy. All right, show them where the fridge is first. Put a schedule on it. Let them manage, time manage these jobs into their current life. Younger kids can pick up laundry. They can fold laundry, clean laundry. They can vacuum. In fact, here's a list of age-appropriate chores you can give your kids today. It's easy. It's very easy. Okay, I lie. It's not easy, and I know. I grew up with chores that range from chopping wood, mowing the lawn, clearing trash, 
farm work, and that was just outside of the house. Inside the house, the kitchen was my duty, the bathrooms were mine, and a whole list of other chores. I'm sure you get the idea. My husband, being a man, also grew up with chores. Some of those chores might be considered child labor now. He had to climb palm trees to get down gates. He had to clear fields for farming. But this was his life. When my third child was born and turned one, we decided that it was time for me to take a break, join the ladies at lunch. Fast forward three years, and one day while making pasta, I asked my son for the colander, the sieve. He looked at me, the what? Under the sink, the thing with the holes, the sieve. I want to pour the water out, finish dinner, make the pasta. <sighs> I don't know what you're talking about. This, this right here, you know, we pour the pasta in, the water comes out the other side. My son was six, his elder sister was eight, and the youngest was three. For me, at that point in time, I froze. A truth I hadn't thought about. My kid was life, skill, illiterate. He didn't know what a colander was. Something that he should have played with in the sandbox. I called the other two down. I tested them on all the kitchen appliances. What do you do here? How do you use the washing machine? Uh, how do you use the microwave? A knife, how do you hold it? I was worried that I had left my kids without essential information that they would need to get ahead in life. Then I made a decision, one that would change everything for our family. I asked our wonderful cooking, cleaning, Guarding water, laundry folding to perfection housekeeper to find another job. I, Lamasaman, needed to take back our house and give it to our kids so that they could figure out what they needed to be successful in life, to get the life skills that would help them when they left my little bubble that I had created. I needed them to know everything, all the knowledge that I had taken for granted. Because if I didn't have a choice, I had to do these things. They were just part of everyday life. They were so much a part of my life that they were just like having smartphones and Instagram now to our kids. The only difference was working those chores gave me incomparable work ethic. And I was a functioning, producing member of my family. Now, Instagram and uh, smartphones, well, that's another TED Talk. It was hellish at first. The youngest wanted to do the older kids' chores. I had to put people in timeout uh, for using the broom to brush their sister's hair. I had to let go of my OCD for perfectly folded towels, and perfect was no longer something that I could use, a word that I could use to describe my house. I yelled a lot. I put kids in timeout. I changed the password on the iPad and threw it in the safe for three years because it competed with my chore schedule. In our money, cult social circles, I had basically lost it. I was crazy. Or at least that's what I was told. But I believed what they called crazy, I called grit. I was a firefighter. I was a manager in a corporation. I worked with the VIPs and rulers of Emirates. I had worked and persevered through so much. I was determined that I would persevere through this. And then one day, when I had done too many hours on the road, I walked into the house with a table set, dinner prepped and ready. 
And I knew that three years were worth every ounce of frustration. My son, who didn't know what a colander was, had created a dinner beyond belief, with even folded napkins on the table. It had taken him almost two hours, but he persevered. He worked through it. And he was no longer life skill illiterate, and he was not. I breathed a sigh of relief. The newly learned life skills proved to be essential. And there were now three independent kids in my house that knew how to take care of themselves, and most importantly, knew how to take care of each other. The Chinese saying states that it takes one generation to build wealth, one generation to spend it and enjoy it, and one generation to lose it. So I ask you, which generation are you? And which generation are your children? Thank you.